Hello everyone, welcome back to a, another episode of the Smite Guide to Odin. Now I started this episode slightly early here, this is the Slash episode, just so you know ahead of time. But I started this slightly early because I have a lot to say about Odin outside of Conquest, and even to some extent in Conquest. Let's actually pull that volume, ah uh, no, we'll keep the volume where it is, that should be fine. But anyways, I have a lot to say about Odin in and out of Conquest that is really relevant to Slash. Now, I mentioned in the solo episode that Odin is the only warrior, well, one of the few warriors that does not have any form of self-heal, which makes him a huge standout in terms of, among, you know, amongst the warriors. In fact, looking at this entire list, only Nike does not have a self-heal. Literally everyone else here can heal themselves in some way. Bruiser Sobek, that's actually important to know. I'm sorry, I also forgot that uh, Osiris also does not have a self-heal. So he's very unusual in that these three here, Nike, Odin, and Osiris, none of them have a self-heal. But what Odin makes up for is he is the, I am reasonably confident, yeah, thinking about it, I think he is the only character in the game who has 100% anti-heal. It's in his ult. Anyone who's in his Ring of Spears receives healing from absolutely nothing. Not items, not abilities, not even divine intervention. Nothing. And that's extremely unique and gives him an unusual edge outside of Conquest. Why outside of Conquest? Well, in Conquest, whether you're playing jungle or you're playing solo Odin, it's not until very, very late in the game that you actually start to be able to even conceivably catch all of the enemy in your ring. It's not even on the table, really, uh, until the late game. Now, with jungle, you might get lucky, grab two or three people in mid, potentially. But you don't even... That's not even itself necessarily always going to happen either. This is much less of a problem in non-conquest modes, where the enemy groups up much, much earlier. With their composition, we're going... He's going bruiser, so we're going to go for more defensive build than we normally would. They don't have enough, uh, we're going to go with Tainted Steel, actually, and we're going to go for Glad Shield. We're still going to do some damage. We're just, normally, if the enemy team were tankier, and if Sobek was going with a full defense build, I would have gone Bluestone. He's going Bruiser, which means he's going to be building some of his own damage, so we're going to play this a little bit more defensively than we normally would, which is why I picked, um, which is why I picked up Tainted Steel between the Horus the Naja and the very high likelihood that Shibalanke will be picking up some form of self-heal. I just feel Tainted Steel was going to be my best option there. Now, anyways, back to the point. This makes Odin very impactful early on in a team fight, but he really can't sustain himself in a team fight like a lot of other warriors can. Also, he's got one of the most unusually slowest forms of crowd control I've ever seen in my life. It's fascinating. The the Gungnir throw, I didn't actually mention this before, but the Gungnir throw is hands down, I'm pretty sure, the slowest form of crowd control in the game. Incredibly useful. Don't get me wrong, it is one of my favorite forms of crowd control because, quite frankly, the little shockwaves that come beforehand are quite handy, especially if you have Bluestone Pendant. Um, but for actual purposes of stunning, it's the slowest thing you've ever seen. And how you feel about that really depends on your personal preference. Again, I find the shockwaves very useful if you build correctly. I don't have bluestone here, so it's not quite as useful um, as it typically would be, but it's still nice to have for extra damage. And you are, I believe, um, what I call motion immune, which means you can't be knocked back, you can't be popped up, you can't be pulled while you're using that, I think. Become immune to knockbacks. Only the knockback. Alright. So you're not quite move immune. Okay. That's fine. But, uh, anyways. We're fine. We're fine. 
we're fine. So yeah, when you when you're looking to get into a fight with Odin in anything that isn't conquest, you're gonna have to be kind of careful about it because it can absolutely get very ugly very quickly. And again, his ult is less useful. Well, it's useful in conquest, but much much later in conquest than in any other mode. Um. So, it is, he is more useful in literally every mode except, well, he's useful in Conquest, it just takes later for him to really make a significant impact, as you could see from the previous episode where Raven Shield alone just made him incredibly useful at tanking Towers and Phoenixes, and again, the, the, the Spear Wall, is it the Ring? It's the Ring of Spears. The Ring of Spears is potentially absolutely teamfight changing. And more so here in Slash and literally every other mode. Now you might be thinking, and I'll cover this in the Just episode, but you might be thinking that he's less effective in Joust because there's only three enemies, but that's actually not true. I'll show you why in that episode. We're not going to worry about that now, but just know that he is actually just as useful in Joust as he is everywhere else. So don't you worry about that. Um, but yes, he is... He is great, but again, you are going for a sort of... Once you make your initial impact, you really are going to have a hard time lasting in the fight. So you're basically trying to jump in, do some either serious damage, or completely wipe someone off the face of the earth. Really depends on the situation. Throw out your ring of spears, and then you stay in your ring of spears until that ex that ends, and then you basically are trying to get back out of the fight and prep for another bird bomb uh, attack. Does he have his... No, he does not. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing. I think I got... I only got two there. A bit unfortunate. I was hoping... No. No, I forgot that I killed the other guy beforehand. Just wipe out everyone. No, he, he did an excellent job there. I'm going to be really honest. The Sobek is really on top of this. He's a bit arrogant about it, but quite frankly, considering the display of skill that I've seen from the Sobek, it is absolutely deserved arrogance. This is where you can really actually legitimately... I don't care how well you're doing, unless you're doing absolutely fire like the Sobek is. He is, he really is, a good Sobek. He's an excellent Sobek player. I will 100% give him that. If, if Kuku Ymir main ever sees this, yes, you are definitely one of the best Sobeks I've ever seen. Probably better with Sobek than I am, mostly because my plucks aren't always that accurate. Yeah, I kind of have to be in the zone for that, but clearly this guy is just either in the zone already or just absolutely blowing people away. Absolutely fantastic. But I'm getting distracted by the amazing Sobek gameplay. Uh, you are looking to just kind of jump in there, make your impact, and get back out. Fair enough. Fair, that's a pretty bold move, huh? I badly goofed that, but... Fair enough. You know, if I had mana, I would totally go in on that, but I don't have mana right now, so I'm not going to. She's got it, though. Now, you've seen that where once I ran out of mana, I was just left. I could have, if I had been most other warriors, I probably could have gone back in there. I obviously didn't have the mana. I wasn't going to be able to sustain myself even if I, you know, did. Ah, uh, that's just a shame. That was good, though. He should have saved up for his dash. He would have made it out. Are we not chasing this? We are not chasing this. Oh, alright. Oh, hold on. Kind of got to get rid of this problem. Though, so, back off. Oh, shoot. Come on. Oh, nope. I, I overstayed. Again, I don't have any ability to sustain in a fight, so that 
kind of thing is going to happen. You're going to get caught out, and you really have no options once your abilities are down. I mean, you're not going to be able to sustain yourself out gradually. Yes, you can build items for that, but quite frankly, in this particular kind of situation, a lot of your items are going to be focused on building up your stats, building up your combination of damage and defense, so you can go in there, last through your ring of spears, and then basically bail. That was absolute trash. Let's save her life anyways, though. Good. Some good moves by our allies here. That was good. We lost a tower, but... Well, we lost both of our first towers, but that's okay at this point in time. Alright, we're just gonna go for this then? Okay. Alright. Nope. I'm not second round for that. I don't need to fight you. There's nothing to fight for. We don't have the people we need here to take that tower, so, and I'm not going to take that tower by myself, so I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, wait. Tsukiyomi's going in. Interesting. Interesting that you used your escape there. I appreciate a good aggressive dash on Shibulanke, but that was not the moment. That was a complete whiff. I don't have the mana for this. Alright. See ya. <laughs> Alright. We're going to go for... I think a nice Pridwind. I want that cooldown. <coughs> and a Cloak of Meditation, so that way I can at least have some form of sustain. At least a little bit. Okay. And then... Nasra's just chilling there. Alright, there's Shibulanke over there. Here's you. We have a Juggernaut incoming. That was a fire Gungnir throw. What are you doing? My allies didn't need that ring. That's fine. Ah, I forgot he can fly through the wall like that. That was a mistake on my part. Very nice. Excellent. Both you lunatic. Come here. Excellent. He drove him right into me. That was beautiful. Nice. Oh, I could have tanked this, my guy. Doesn't make a difference. Fair point. I don't have any mana. Oh, hold on. I will body block so he doesn't get ulted. Stand behind me. I just got my mana absolutely trashed by a well placed Naja. Something. I'm grabbing the speed buff so I can get the hell out of dodge. Nice job, nice job. Alright. And then off we go. You know what? I think I'm going to leave the majority. I'm going to go for, um, I'm going to go full tank here. An oddly effective ring of spears that should not have been as effective as it was. Get stunned, son. Yeah? Excellent. Come here. I will body block for you. I tried. 
Don't know what the hell will happen there, but alright. That was close. I'm not sure how that... What? What does that mean? What is... <laughs> like, Asved, sewer hard. What the hell does that mean? I'm gonna die. Oh, wait, I might not. Feel like overcommitting, guy? They all do. I whiffed that completely, but now I'm out. I don't have anything else to offer. I'm gonna go for Mantle of Discord here. And then hopefully this stays up for two more seconds. Come on! Mm. Curse my luck. Yeah, now I have a weird glitch going on with my soul. <laughs> Come here, Thoth. Oh no! Get slapped! All right. Work of hope for the win. Come on, take this, take this. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. I don't have the health for this, but whatever. Let's go out with a bang. I'm just going to hit this right now. Thank you. I, for some reason, could not finish that off. This is going to go very badly for me. Oh, come on. Those who hit like a wet noodle. What the hell is this? You know, I'm going to die if I don't turn around and get some damage down here. Alright, I should have used my Raven Shield first. That's alright. Mild mistake on my part, but not too big of a deal. So you can see where I'm playing fairly cautiously as Odin overall, even though I do have protections, because I don't have really any form of sustain, but you will also see me turn around and using my cage to cage off people. Uh, the situation in left lane where I kind of trapped him up against the tower was accidental, but it is a potentially good use of the shield if you can set that up. It's just usually better to get them in. Well, you should always be striving to get them in the Ring of Spears. That was just a happy accident where even though they weren't getting the anti-healing of the Ring of Spears, at the very least, they still were technically walled in. So it's a it's the next best thing. But I am using it pretty aggressively to try to get people who are self-healing. Again, he is building lifesteal here. The only person who I really... I got I went for Kusenbo exactly specifically once, but I think the rest of the time he's just been hanging around and in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I've been trying to get the ring around as many people as possible. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I do not. Uh, there are some people that are just not worth putting the ring around. I am very lucky in this particular instance that everyone except Horus is a viable target for this. I can get both here, but I'm not going to. The reason why I'm holding back on this is because between Sobek and I, we are not going to get anything useful done here. Alright. Now we can get some stuff done here. Nice job, Naja. Naja went back into the ring using me in the sash. Okay. I gotta go. Okay, good good play, good play. That was fair. Now I'm gonna go for my one damage item that I've been wanting to go for, which is specifically Heartseeker. One of the best items on Odin, because no matter what happens, you're going to be doing some damage. If they stay in the Ring of Spears, you're going to damage them that way. If they escape the Ring of Spears, then a spear is going to fly out. Uh, it means that leave the ring through or over a wall are chased by Gungnir taking damage. That means they're also going to trigger the Heartseeker proc, which is exactly what we're looking for here. So no matter what happens, you're going to be doing some pretty good amounts of damage using Heartseeker. Even little shockwaves will inflict that damage. Can we? No. No, we can't. So we're just going to grab that uh, 
Absolutely delightful Heartseeker damage. Alright. This is a wild fight going on there, I must say. Now, you may be wondering why I've never gone for the mana buffs. Actually, I'm going to do that now. It's because I've never really had time to. We've been fighting so much, and I've been needed in various fights that I just never have been able to get around to it. But now that uh, Ram is gone, and I have kind of the spare moment, I'm going to do that. Again, as Odin, you're you're in an unusual spot as Odin, where you sh you're like a mage, where you should be present for every team fight that you can, because your ultimate is stupid awesome in a lot of team fights, especially in situations like this where most of the enemy team is unable to escape from your ring, and even then, the only two that can are conditional. Nasha has to hit somebody, has to hit one of my allies outside of the ring to escape it, but he has to hit them with the sash, and the Horus needs an ally outside of the ring so he can fly to, to get out of the ring. And just people like she Blanca here are just doomed. There we go. I'm gonna use med here. Get rid of you. Come on. Oh, good play. Good play. He really masterfully used that titan. That was really good. A lot of people don't know you can do that. I was hoping he was one of them. <laughs> Sadly, he does know. Alright. Hello? I'll just tank this. Whatever. There we go. We have a Juggernaut in here, so. Alright. Perfect. Oh. If I just thrown my spear slightly earlier, I could have thrown out a ring of spears and locked him in there. Yeah, he's not going to be able to pick that up, but Persephone might... She's, she focused well. I suppose that's understandable. She wouldn't have been able to take it with him there. Oh, that's it. That's game. So, you can see where my priority in a lot of that was busting out my bird bomb and using my ring of spears. Uh, and then after that, I was generally trying to see what I could do before losing too much health and then getting back out afterwards. You, it's, Odin is fascinating to play in non-conquest because... Let me put it this way, and this is going to make a lot of sense to junglers, and this is why I recommend Odin as a great uh, starting warrior for jungle mains, or a great introduction to jungling for solo mains. The concept of Odin in non-conquest game modes is you build him like a warrior, splashing in as much damage as appropriate, but play him like an assassin. That is basically how that goes. You could see that throughout the match, where I was bird bombing in, and I was throwing my shield up. Now, you'll notice a lot of the time I was willing to settle for two or three people. Quite honestly, that's all you really need in a team fight right now in this meta. Specifically, She Blanca and Thoth were big priority targets. The Naja was not doing well enough to be of major concern. And as I said earlier, if he planned his sash correctly, then he was able to get out of it. He actually went into it one time, which is pretty funny. Um, Horus was a great example of getting out of it with a, an ability, uh, unusually. You'll notice I really, I only used it on Kuzumbo specifically once, and that was when he was running away. Now, you'll also probably be wondering why I was so flagrant with my ult use. It's such a short cooldown, and at that particular, you know, I was building up protection, uh, protections. I was building up cooldown for that specific reason. I think it's by default on a, um, I'll double check after this because I want to talk about builds, but I'm pretty sure it's roughly on default on a, uh, an approximately um, 60 or 90 second cooldown. It's, it's a very low cooldown for ults. I think it's 60 seconds. Um, so you can you can afford to throw your ult around in pretty much every team fight. Don't be afraid of using it. Using it in any situation you care to use it on is just absolutely ideal because it's such a low cooldown. Uh, use it all the time. That is your primary contribution to most team fights. You bird bomb in, you throw your ring of spears down, 
and then you fight in this in the ring until that fades, and then either you bird bomb again, or you get the hell out of there, and then rinse and repeat. So, again, I just want to recap why I built defensive. The Sobek was, the Sobek, thank goodness, this is hugely important. The Sobek specifically said they were building Bruiser. You can see they started with the Hero's Axe, which is fine. That's a decent, well, it would have been Warrior's Axe originally, which is a decent combination of offense and defense. Then they busted out the Jade Emperor's Crown, also fine, a good mix of defense and offense. Then they went Pridwin. Pure defense with some nice cooldown. The passive is a nice form of damage if you want it. Breastplate of Vigilance, great survival item. Pure defense. Rod of Tahuti, pure offense. Not a bad pickup. I'm not fond of Rod of Tahuti on Sobek. Personally, I prefer uh, Soul Reaver on him. That's a personal preference. I find it more useful on him personally. But I can understand why this was built. But again, he was going into that uh, kind of mix there. The only mixed items I technically built were Glad Shield and Pridwin. Bulwark of Hope and Mantle of Discord were pure defense. Tainted Steel was mixed technically, and then I was going to build a single pure damage item in the form of Heartseeker. Now, when do you want to be building, say, Bluestone? I typically build Bluestone if the enemy is unusually tanky, and by unusually tanky, I have a very broad definition of that. If they had Anubis instead of Thoth, I would have gone into Bluestone, right? If they had Ra instead of Thoth, if they had, um, I don't think there's, uh, if they had Apollo instead of Shibalanke, Apollo actually has the ability to boost his physical protections, so going through with a percentage, uh, damage type is a little bit more important for Apollo. Not hugely deal-breaking, but it's, it's something to keep in mind if you're ever facing Apollo. You know, if they had Ravan instead of Naja, right? People like that, some of the more tanky versions of their individual classes, but they didn't have that. They only had Kuzinbo and Horus as their damage out, I'm sorry, their defense, their front line. So I knew I wasn't really going to need Bluestone, and I was more likely going to be needing Tainted Steel, because yes, there is 100% anti-heal on the Ring of Spears, but that's only up every, what, 40 or so seconds on my boy here? Where the hell is Odin? I have lost Odin. What? Oh, no, here he is. <laughs> My mouse wheel doesn't work here. It's a 90 second cooldown. It starts at 110, which is fine. Compare that. Now, keep in mind that's 110 to 90 seconds. Compare that to a lot of other warriors, right? You've got Achilles. His is 90 seconds. Yeah. It's fine. 75 seconds. She's always had a shorter one. This is a shorter one, too. 75 seconds. Shock, 90 seconds. Coco Lane, 100 seconds. Erlang Shen, 85 seconds. This one is a little bit shorter, I think. No, it's 110. It's longer. Guan Yu's. This is 90 seconds. You can see there's a fairly average of 90, but some are slightly shorter, but some are much faster. Um, but 90 seconds is a decent, a decently short cooldown there for that. Well, that, that has technicalities. 90 seconds, 100 seconds, you can definitely see a pattern. 110 down to 90, 75, well, he's got 100% anti-heal. Osiris is interesting because he's got 100% anti-heal on a very small area rather than a whole ring. Uh, he's got 90 seconds, also down from 110. This is, I think, 100. This is 90. Uh, it used to be much, much lower cooldown for Ring of Spears. I think it used to be, like, something ridiculous, like 60 seconds, which is what I was remembering originally. But even so, with 90 seconds with 40% cooldown, that's a, that's a very short amount of time. And it is incredibly powerful. You can see where the Ring of Spears damage if the enemy escapes it is actually a really substantial amount of power, and this is why he's such a devastating jungler, is because really the point of Ring of Spears in a jungle role is to bait the enemy into leaving the ring, <laughs> basically. Um, you can also see, and this is almost never talked about, and I actually haven't mentioned it yet specifically because it's not something you actively plan for, 
but the enemy has their power reduced by 15%. There's nothing really particularly specifically special about this. It sounds incredibly powerful, and it is, but when you're in the heat of battle, when you're in the middle of a match, this is not what you're thinking of when you're busting out a ring of spears. When you bust out a ring of spears, it is for two specific reasons. In a assassin-type playstyle, you're trying to bait the enemy into escaping from the ring, so that way they take guaranteed 400 plus damage, right? If you're really going aggressive, that's what you're trying to do with that. If you're playing defensive like I was in that last slash, then you're using this for the anti-heal, which is primarily why I was trying to go for the Shi Blanke and the Thoth. They had high power, they can heal themselves a decent amount. The Shi Blanke, I know, specifically had Atlantis Bow and Aussie, so he was looking to do large amounts of life steal through crits. So that was why Ring of Spears, using Ring of Spears on him was very important, particularly in the late game. In the early game, I was just trying to wall off Thoth because he wasn't going to be able to escape very easily. He would have to break a wall to escape, which is takes five hits, which Thoth doesn't have the auto attack speed to do that. So Thoth was basically unable to escape without outside help if I got him in the Ring of Spears. And taking out the enemy mage is obviously really important for team fights. But that's really the kind of thing you are looking to achieve with Ring of Spears. Yes, a 15% reduction in the enemy's power is cool. You, but you never think about it in the middle of a fight. You're thinking of either separating an enemy or two from their allies and just mopping the floor with them, or you are trying to trick enemies into taking a guaranteed 400 plus damage. Now you might be wondering, Professor, why wouldn't you necessarily want the entire enemy team in the ring? Because you'll also notice that I've n I have never really went for a full team. I think the most I've gone for with Ring of Spears is three. This is something I learned from Cold Heart Experience. Um, you get the entire enemy team in a ring. If you don't have the right kind of backup, this goes south very quickly for you. Because all five of the enemies in the ring are going to panic. And they're going to throw out all of their abilities. And unless you've got allies who have large AoE ultimates that can take advantage of your Ring of Spears, trapping the entirety of the enemy team in your Ring of Spears is asking to die. Okay? And that's something I've never heard anyone talk about. There are very specific enemies... Enemies? What am I talking about? There are specific allies that you will be way more actively looking to grab four or five enemies in. And I'll, let's talk about some of these, right? So, n if you're playing with other warriors, pretty much none of them... Gilgamesh actually... Gilgamesh and Shock, I'll actually throw out there, are the only two warriors where you might want to grab more than three of the enemy at a time with your ring. Bologna, maybe, but her flag, while it does boost your protections in power... Yeah. While it does produce your protections in power, it's not a big enough boost to matter inside of the ring. Sure, it can sometimes help, but it's not really that big of a deal. But Gilgamesh and Shock have really nice ultimates for this, but mostly you're looking at your mage when you use your ult. When you use Ring of Spears, you want Zeus, Vulcan, Poseidon. I mean, the Persephone's ult is okay if she hits someone in the ring, but that can be pretty tough because as large as that plant is that she throws, it's still a skill shot and a bit unreliable. Ulrin's ult is a fairly interesting example. Sometimes this is useful, sometimes this is not. It really depends on the enemy team composition, actually. The more auto-attackers they have on their team, generally I find the more useful Ulrin's ult is, because they have a much, much harder time getting out of the cage, because typically people with a heavy auto-attack presence don't typically have great escapes, usually. That's generic statement. Don't, like, take that as gospel or anything. Nox is actually surprisingly useful despite the fact that her ult doesn't do big AoEs because her silence will take up most of it, and all she has to do is silence the people in your ring. Boom, they can't escape, they're in the ring for longer, and if she can pull off the whole root silence combo, that's at least one enemy pretty much guaranteed dead if they're not a tank. Um, beyond that, Hera, if she's got a fresh Argus, this she's pretty useful in there. Hades has a great ult to use in there. Eset has a great ult to use in there. Opwash, same thing, fantastic ult to use with Odin's ring. And then, really, that's that's pretty much it. There is the interesting caveat. Why am I picking Assassin here? There's the interesting caveat that on her obelisk, which 
puts sand in the area, makes the enemy slower, and gives him increased damage. This is actually surprisingly very useful when combined with Odin's Ring of Spears, and that's, again, something I've never heard anyone talk about. Cupid's ult as well is really useful in that, because especially since Cupid's ultimate has a cripple built into it, so they can't escape the ring anyway, so you put a Ring of Spears down, and Cupid puts his ult down, that's that's golden. You've got the whole enemy team in there. That's that's a one team fight almost guaranteed. That's as close to a guaranteed win in a team fight you can get your hands on, honestly. I'm not even kidding. Cupid Odin is such a potent combination. Now, this might sound like this some of you might get the idea of hey, maybe we should combine Odin and Cupid in conquest into a fantastic duo lane. Don't. Odin's Besides the Ring of Spears, Odin's only other form of crowd control is, like I said earlier, the slowest form of crowd control in the game. It's a really extended wait for a single target stun, which is not good enough to make him a support. He makes an excellent jungler if accompanied by a dual lane Cupid. And even in, if he's playing solo lane, Cupid is a really great late game companion to Odin. But do not take Odin into the support role, he does not have the crowd control for it. Um, beyond this, I don't think there's... Well, the one assassin I would say, shout out to, is being very specifically useful here. Actually, two, now that I'm thinking about it. Susano and um, Hunbots. I forgot his name for some reason. Some people might say Daji, but this can be a double-edged sword depending on how aware the Daji is. If she ults inside of your ring, or better yet, if your Daji isn't paying attention, you use your ring around her after she ults, that's fine. You can do the same thing with Ares if you have a Ares present. Um, but typically, they're going to use their beads anyways, so it's unusual to see this work. Um, outside of Assault, if you're lucky enough to get Daji or Ares in a match and you're Odin, that's pretty handy because not everyone builds beads in Assault. But in most situations, they're saving their beads for Daji or Ares, and it's ulting around Ares or Daji is either means you're really optimistic or you're just wasting your time. <laughs> One of the two. Um, as for Guardians, because a lot of people don't think about this either, I mentioned Ares. Some other great other options are actually Cerberus, for a similar reason. He can pull them in, but a bit more deliberately. He's actually easier to work with than either Ares or Daji, but he suffers from the same problem. Most enemies will save up their beads for him, so that kind of counters that. Uh, Sobek and Sylvanas, if they're building damage, are really good for this, but otherwise, no. For a very similar reason, same thing with Ymir. Ymir is probably out of the three of these guardians that I just mentioned, Sobek, Sylvanas, and Ymir. Ymir is most likely going to be the best, is going to have the most impact damage-wise, but uh, honestly, most guardians don't build enough power to make that effective, so that's why I wasn't really going for that. But yeah, you, when you... When you are using your ult, unless you have one of these specific characters on your team, one of these specific gods, don't get the whole enemy team in there, because that is just asking for you to die. What they're going to do is they're going to spam all their abilities, panic shoot whatever walls they can get near, and they'll start spilling out of there. Now, there are pros and cons to this, but the con one of the cons is this, that you're probably going to die, because when you obviously you're in the middle of the ring when you throw it down, and you've probably just bird bombed into the situation, so you don't have your shield, you don't have your jump most of the time. You have your really long stun, and that's all you've got at that point. And they're going to see this, and they're going to panic in your direction. And while their abilities aren't necessarily going to be 100% accurate, you're still a, you're a stinking warrior, you're a decent sized target, you're probably going to die. Um, along with any other allies who happen to be in the ring when you put it down. So... I didn't really mention this a whole lot in Conquest it, because it didn't come up, and I doubted I would be getting any allies in Slash that were that would make me want to grab the entire enemy team, but I obviously was prepared for that, and I'm speaking about it now, but when you're playing Odin, and you're throwing out your Ring of Spears like you should be as often as possible, don't try and get the whole team. Get two or three. Ideally, you get two or three damage dealers. Ideally, um, wall them off, take them out, clean up. That's generally what you want to be doing with the Ring of Spears. A lot of people just assume, ah, I should be getting as many people as possible. No, 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 no. That will get you killed unless you have very specific people on your team. 
two or three, unless you've got one of these big team ults, one of these huge AoE ults, usually from a mage, don't try and grab the whole enemy team. Take two or three, leave it alone. If you're doing it, if you if your allies have already cleaned up a lot of enemies like I did with the Kuzenbo, Kuzenbo was the last man standing there. Wall them off, wall off that last man standing, get the D aside. But generally speaking, only go for a full team capture if you've got the right circumstances. Now this changes a little bit in Joust because it's a 3 on 3, so the consequences of walling the entire enemy team are far less severe. But in literally every other mode, even late game conquest, take 2 or 3, don't go for the full 5. One, the full five is a bit tougher to get. A lot of people will just... A lot of people who've played against Odin or with Odin will recognize the the implied threat of a full team cage and separate out. But they'll separate out in clusters. So this actually works to your advantage. Again, unless you have specific people on your team, in which case it's a disadvantage. But most of the time, you aren't going to have these people on your team because they're really not meta right now in most cases. So not a lot of people are playing them right now. Um, so you want to... Let, you want to let them split apart into small groups, pick the group with the more damage dealers, wall off that group, two or three, and just keep that in mind. So with that being said, thank you all very much for joining me. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. And thank you all very much for joining me, and have a great 24 hours.